Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Okay, the, the last invited talk uh, uh, presenter is the Dr. Uh, Zhang Maozhong, uh, who is the uh, Chairman of uh, Department of uh, Engineering Science and the Ocean Engineering in National Taiwan University. Uh, well, I, I just know he, he got the PhD from uh, Germany uh, University, so you're going to speak in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's an uh, uh, expert on uh, up to a uh, uh, mechanic uh, control system. And uh, he right now is the major PI uh, under the National uh, Energy Program. Uh, his project uh, actually the offshore ocean, uh, offshore wind energy and uh, ocean energy both. So I guess he, he know the uh, recent progress of the National Energy Program. So let's welcome now Professor Jiang Mao Peace. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your introduction. And uh, Professor Shun Hu, and uh, Dr. Klingenfeld, and uh, Professor Lee, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I would like to follow uh, the talk of uh, uh, Professor Lin. He has uh, already an overview of the energy policy for Taiwan. And uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, more in detail about offshore wind energy because you know offshore wind energy now is the most important uh, renewable energy in, in Taiwan to promote. And uh, from 1994 to 1998, I studied in, in Aachen, here in Aachen for my doctorate degree. And uh, I remember in 1996 in the Hanover Basin, the topic on Hanover Basin at that time is wind energy. So. After 1998, I come back to Taiwan and, uh, and uh, work in the university. And uh, Taiwan, actually, since uh, 26, about 10 years later, then Germany start to pro promote the onshore wind energy. And uh, after two or three years operation, the first uh, wind turbine was destroyed by typhoon. So it's my study about the wind energy. <laughs> we, we, we have a project cooperate with the Thai power company to analyze the reason why the, the wind turbine was destroyed by typhoon. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, and, uh, the team in our department, uh, our Department of Engineer Science and the Ocean Engineer, we have a professor in Naval Architecture and the Ocean Engineer, and uh, also we have a group of professors in double E, Electrical Engineer, so we can have an interdisciplinary research uh, focus on the offshore wind. And uh, also, I'm director of NTU uh, Energy Research Center. And the NP2 actually ended uh, after five years, and in March this year. But we still uh, have some research project continue to work. OK. First, I would like to have an introduction about the electricity generation of Taiwan. In this figure, you can see. Actually, in Taiwan, we have uh, about 98 of energy must be imported. So, so that means only two persons is in generous in Taiwan. And uh, about the electric, uh, elect electricity generation, about 85% of is thermal power. Nuclear is eight power. And then renewable is about five, kind of, uh, is about five percent. And uh, the Renewable energy target by 2025. And this figure you can see is the target is about 20% of renewable, the total electricity uh, supported by renewable by 2025, including the solar about 20 gigawatt and the offshore wind is 5.7 gigawatt and the total is about 30 gigawatt. And uh, uh, this figure actually is from the above year. It's very new information in July this year. So I especially direct copy. <laughs> copy. So you can see the demand trend uh, uh, until uh, 2025. And uh, the legal, uh, the, the reserve margin rate is about uh, 15%. And uh, it, uh, according to the demand and uh, the increase of the electricity generation and also increased uh, 
and uh, especially the renewable energy, and uh, to keep about 60% uh, to 70% of the uh, reserve margin rate. And uh, yeah, this figure is by GWEC, Global Wind Energy Council, about the accumulation, global accumulation offshore wind energy capacity uh, in 2070. So the trend is very clear, uh, not only in Europe, but also in Asian countries and also in the USA. Their next step also would like to develop uh, offshore wind energy. And uh, Taiwan is here. In 2017, we only have uh, two, four megawatt wind turbine. And our neighbor country, mainly China also, they have a big, big goal by 2030, 30 gigawatt of offshore wind. And in Taiwan, the target, just as I mentioned, 2025 is 5.5 gigawatt. And how about after 2025? Actually, it's the phase three. I will, I will mention it later. And at least by 2030, Another five gigawatt is about 10 gigawatt totally, oh, at least will be open oh, in Taiwan. And besides the offshore wind energy, we also have some oh, marine energy, uh, especially the marine current energy. Okay, in this figure you can see the oh, framework of the National Energy Program Phase 2. And uh, the CEO, the first CEO is this Guang Professor, this Guang, and then Professor Yang Jintang, and then uh, Professor Wu Wangzhong. And the, under the Framework, we have uh, six different uh, focus centers and three divisions. And I'm the PI of the offshore wind power and the marine energy focus center. And uh, the mission is to, to develop the offshore wind, uh, wind farm development, and also the lo localization of wind turbine. And uh, also, we would like to develop uh, marine engineer and the underwater structure in Taiwan. And uh, besides that, also the marine energy, uh, such as uh, ocean current uh, energy generation system. Okay, yeah, the potential offshore wind energy wind power in Taiwan, you can see in this map, yeah, especially in, the, in winter, the wind come from uh, uh, northeast uh, from China, and uh, in the Taiwan Strait, here is Taiwan, uh, the high mountain in the middle of Taiwan, and uh, the other side is China, also Wuyishan is also a high mountain. So it's like a tunnel effect, uh, the wind will be accelerated in the Taiwan Strait. So the wind condition is very, very, very well. And uh, yeah, the average wind speed is over 10 meters per second. And according to the, the Fossi offshore, uh, they report uh, uh, the top 10 in the world, uh, nine wind farm uh, actually is in the uh, Taiwan Strait. Uh, so we have a so, so good wind condition, uh, why we don't to develop our own uh, energy generation system by offshore wind. Okay, and uh, the potential actually for the shallow water here, 20 meter is about five gigawatt, and the principal is 1.2 gigawatt. And in the deep water re region tier 20, uh, 50 meter, the potential is 48 gigawatt, and uh, the principal is uh, 10 gigawatt. That means we have, uh, uh, in, within the 50 meter water depth, we have uh, about uh, uh, 11 gigawatt can be, can be developed. And besides that, uh, in the deeper water region, uh, the, the water depth over 50 meters, we have uh, the potential 90 gigawatt. That means in this, this region. Yeah, and uh, the feasible is at least 10 gigawatt can be open. And uh, the reason why the 50 meter is, is, the, is the boundary, because uh, now within the water depth of 50 meter, we can use the fixed type, uh, now used in Taiwan. And uh, if the water depth is over 50 meters, we, we must use the 14 type. And uh, the 14 type uh, actually now uh, in Europe uh, have uh, some demonstration wind farm, but a uh, large com commercial wind farm is still under in in investigation. So it's also the opportunity in Taiwan. Okay, the goal of show uh, wind power policy, uh, I think the Professor Dean has mentioned, and uh, I can. Uh, accelerate the so we the, for the short term is uh, actually it was five five hundred and twenty gigawatt now the the new uh, data is about one gigawatt uh, so that means the the speed the dependent speed has been accelerated and uh, also by twenty twenty five is five point seven gigawatt and uh, in the onshore actually Taiwan is limited area uh, and uh, 
the goal is 1.2 gigawatt by 2025. And for the offshore, and actually we have in the phase two, we have 36 potential sites and 22 past the EIA. And after the competition, auction and the selection, only 14 sites want the the, the the right to develop. Yeah, the Taiwan offshore wind power promotion strategy, we have a three uh, phase. Phase one is the DIP, the offshore demonstration incentive program. And uh, we have a three demonstration wind farm. And according to the experience in the demonstration, and uh, we can uh, make a correct uh, policy for the phase two, for the massive uh, development. So, Phase two is direction of zone application for planning, the GAP. And then now we waiting for the phase three. Uh, the, it will be announced by the uh, Bureau of Energy at the end of the year. So in this figure you can see the result in the phase one, uh, the DIP demonstration. We have a three project by Thai Power and the Swanko and the TGC. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the the goal by 2020 is 520 gigawatt for the demonstration project. And the one is in Miaoli, and the two is in Zhanghua area. Okay. And uh, by in 2017, uh, we have finished three uh, uh, installation of the three main mast. Actually, it's the first uh, uh, long-term measurement in Taiwan, especially in the Taiwan Strait, because uh, before that, we, the measurement only made by uh, the Central Bureau of Weather. And the, the, the mass, minimum mass actually is 10 meter high and on coast, not on ocean. And the, the high of the minimum mass actually is 100 meter, is the height of the sail of the large wind turbine. And the, after two years uh, long term uh, measurement, uh, the average wind, especially the minimum mass in the Formosa one, and it's about 10 meter per second. And, uh, and uh, the data is quite important for the government to make the, 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 the policy uh, for the offshore wind energy. And here you can see the two, uh, uh, Suanko, uh, Formosa One demonstration wind turbine, finished in October 2016. Yeah. And also the other project, uh, type of demonstration, it must be finished by uh, 2020. Okay. So in this figure, you can see the uh, 36 uh, uh, potential site. And the, all the uh, wind farm here, you can see is within 50 meter of water depth, just as I mentioned, is the fixed type. Only fixed type is used in, in this wind farm. And uh, after the uh, selection and competition in April uh, last year, and uh, uh, we have some result like this. Uh, it's about, maybe we can see here, is we have a 10 wind farm uh, got the selection and uh, four wind farm got the uh, in, in the auction yeah and uh, totally is about uh, 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 about uh, 3.8 gigawatt for selection and 1.7 gigawatt for uh, for auction and uh, the fit in tariff actually in 2018, and the free tariff in Taiwan is uh, 5.8 uh, Newton dollar per kilowatt hour. And uh, in, in this year, uh, this year, the, the, the free tariff has been reduced to uh, 5.5, it's about uh, 16 cent euro per kilowatt hour. And the, how about the price? The price is high or low? Actually, there are some argument in the uh, public media. Uh, but in compared with the German filling tariff, actually the price is not high. Uh, because it will, uh, in, in, in German feed tariff, it keep seven, six to seven years and they after that it become the auction. And uh, in this uh, period, and uh, the local industry uh, have the chance uh, to uh, join in the project uh, to develop their, their technology. The so-called local content, uh, local supply chain, I will introduce later. So, this is why the field interior is used in Taiwan. Yeah. So. 
So uh, some picture for the current status uh, of uh, of uh, uh, it just happened in in the Taiwan, Taiwan Harbor, Taichung Harbor, uh, the Zhuangko, uh, uh, the the the, the component now in the Taiwan Taichung Harbor. Now actually, the massive inso installation of the uh, wind wind farm uh, is in in the Taiwan Strait now. It's in the Miaoli, uh, well, it's Siemens uh, wind turbine, and the, the yeah. And the, this picture is, is, I got the mail from my colleague. He take the airplane and adjust the, over the wind farm <laughs> and I take the picture. Yeah, in the, it's, it's the right price. And the, uh, in the Miaoli area, you can see the coast here is it's about a two kilometer far away from the coast and the wind, the wind farm is just under construction. And it must be finished in September or, or October this year, take about 20. Uh, 20 wind turbine uh, of 6 megawatt uh, is uh, totally is about 120 megawatt has been finished this year. And in this table actually is about the, uh, the domestic industry uh, development of offshore wind power. It's uh, actually uh, a commitment of a local supply chain by the wind farm developer in Taiwan. Uh, we have a different kind of, of uh, according to the year of the and we have different kind in uh, like uh, tower foundation uh, in last year uh, the, that means the wind farm finished the, in before 2021 or 2025 they must uh, at least uh, the tower foundation onshore electric component must in the local supply chain that means must use the, uh, the, the product in Taiwan and uh, in the year of 2023 and the 2024 and the 2025, more parts uh, are in demand, uh, like the, the supply chain of the wind turbine, uh, like rotor and sail assembly. Uh, and the, the challenge, actually, more challenge in this. And then the, uh, actually, just on um, Monday this, uh, this week, uh, I joined in the review committee in the IDB for the review of the, uh, it still has some problem. Uh, and then because the problem not only on the, uh, wind farm development, but also some problem on the uh, uh, local supplier. And uh, so I think at least uh, at the end of the year, uh, after the review, some compromise uh, must be made. And uh, some component maybe cannot be achieved in Taiwan, but maybe some component not in the table can be added in the local supply chain. And uh, the goal of the, uh, of, the, of the local supply chain actually, we not only want to develop the offshore wind energy in turn, but also we would like to develop our local industry. And uh, based on that, the demand of a career, of the new job, actually can be also in Taiwan. So some result about the, the, the local supply chain, the so-called wind team, is for the uh, supply chain of wind turbine, and also the marine team for the marine engineer, marine time engineer. Yeah, and uh, it, last year some contract has been signed, and uh, because the investigation of offshore wind, wind power is very huge, and uh, also the budget actually not by not from the government but also but by the uh, wind farm develop. Yeah, now we we are waiting for the phase three, the GP uh, zonal development, because yeah we have another uh, five point five. 4.5 gigawatt uh, has passed the EIA and, and yet uh, unlocated, allocated. And uh, the, uh, the 4.5 gigawatt will be open first. And uh, some wind farm actually not in the uh, 4.5 gigawatt, they still not pass the EIA. They also would like to join in the third phase. So we are waiting for the, 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 the uh, open. At maybe in, at the end of the year or the, in the early quarter, Q2, Q2 of uh, next year. Yeah, and uh, about the research, in uh, according to the European experience, uh, yeah, the learning curve now uh, we just uh, we are now not now at the start, but it, in compare with the uh, another Asian country, uh, we are the pioneer in the Asian. So. 
But of course, now it's compared with the Asian country, we are lower than that. But in compared with the European country, of course, we are, our price is, our cost is still high. But the learning curve is very, very important. And we have no turbine industry. And in compared with like UK, the situation in UK is very similar to Taiwan because UK has no wind turbine manufacturer, but they have a they are good, uh, very good uh, wind farm condition. And so in 2016, uh, UK has about uh, five gigawatt uh, installation of, of offshore wind turbine. And uh, they create uh, about 20,000 nuclear year. So according to that, uh, we, uh, we believe uh, by 2025, in Taiwan, we have a 20, about 5.5 gigawatt uh, to create, and uh, we can also have a similar uh, amount uh, of the, the new job for the, for the, uh, in Taiwan. So, and uh, the upcoming research in Taiwan, in, we consider the, the condition in Taiwan and the, the requirement in Taiwan, because, you know, in Taiwan, we have earthquake, we have typhoon, and uh, the seabed condition also is quite different from the condition in North Sea. So the, the European experience not completely can be used in Taiwan. There still must has some challenge, uh, like earthquake, like typhoon. So, and uh, not all the uh, topic can be also available in Taiwan. So we make a, a, a uh, for the, uh, um, Minister of Science and Technology for the further uh, research, uh, and uh, in the four different aspects uh, like uh, the operation and the maintenance, uh, the uh, big data analysis, and uh, the marine engineer, and uh, also the turbine localization, and uh, the underwater structure. Yeah, and about the detail, I, I would like to skip uh, because uh, due to the time limit. And the, the fourteen will be in, in demand after 2025. And now, actually, in, in Japan, uh, Japan, the situation in Japan is quite similar to Taiwan. We have a typhoon condition. And uh, the problem is, if the water depth is over uh, 50, uh, 50 meters, and uh, the, we, we must use the floating type. And the different kind of floating type now are in, under an investigation. And uh, but the problem is, the, the difference between uh, in the East area region and uh, Europe is we have typhoon, and uh, the, the the platform must be can against the typhoon, uh, the challenge of typhoon. So so I think now uh, friends uh, some friends company now uh, cooperate with uh, Japanese company to develop some kind new of of the platform to against the typhoon. Now uh, and in Taiwan we also have a group of uh, would like to develop our our own uh, platform, uh, including the platform design and uh, the mooring system. Uh, and uh, actually, the best wind condition in Taiwan is here. It's, it's uh, on the greatest than 50 meter. Uh, and uh, we are looking for the another 10 gigawatt in, the, in this region, in the Xinzhou and the Miaoli area. And, uh, uh, I, I, and also, we have a team to develop the, the floating closure current turbine for the marine, marine, uh, marine, marine uh, energy deep, uh, generation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the recent year, we have some, also some cooperation with the German University, like uh, Aachen, my, uh, my university in Stuttgart, and also from Hofer Institute. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. And the, how about the education of also wind in Taiwan? Actually, we have an urgent demand for the human, human power uh, uh, to satisfy the, the, the demand from the industry. So in, in, in the structure of the, the, the also wind energy talent cultivation in Taiwan, we can divide it into two groups, including the green color and the white color. The green color actually is the technician or operator uh, in the wind farm. Uh, they need uh, the GDRO certification. And uh, in the university side, especially in the NTU, we would like to develop a master degree course, uh, especially for the engineers, engineering side, and also uh, finance and the insurance. So now in NTU, we promote uh, NTU offshore wind energy program, including the credit program, a master degree, and the on-job training program. So we, we have some 
new course for, oh, since last year. We opened new course for the student. And uh, because we have no experience in Taiwan, so we cooperate with, with many uh, European <coughs> universities, uh, like uh, Denmark, like, uh, like uh, Dutch, uh, like Germany, uh, like UK, and to promote such kind of program. Yeah. And uh, the, the urgent demand, actually, we can, we can look. Uh, in the recent months, many uh, Wing Fang developers come to a university to join the course to find the guy they need. <laughs> And also, in uh, just uh, uh, three years, uh, th three weeks ago, we had an international workshop on specific issue of Taiwan offshore wind farm. Because it, yeah, Taiwan is high temperature. We have typhoon, earthquake, and high humidity. So the corrosion and the e emission actually is very serious. And uh, also typhoon. And uh, so the uh, operation and maintenance become a very important issue in the future. And also the floating type also will be in demand. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, we invited uh, the professor from uh, Taiwan Hamburg, Hamburg and uh, from Denmark University, Te Te Technical University Denmark, and uh, from Dutch and the uh, UK, and uh, yeah, to have a uh, two days uh, discussion about the, the, I think in the future, in, especially in the Taiwan offshore wind farm, uh, many uh, uh, similar research will be in demand because uh, after the installation, but many new problems will be a call. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, finally, is the in, uh, conclusion. So the goal for 5.5 gigawatt by 2025, and uh, maybe by 2030, 10 gigawatt can be expected at least. And the massive installation of wind farm now in Taiwan. And the, the phase three, we are looking for the phase three that will be open soon. And, uh, we, and also we over 50 meter water depths. Yeah, and uh, we need uh, also international cooperation because uh, in Asian country actually we have no experience about the offshore wind, not only Taiwan, but also uh, Korea, Japan. Now Korea and Japan follow with Taiwan. They are, they are focused on the uh, offshore wind farm development policy in Taiwan. And they would like to learn how to promote their offshore wind policy uh, in the future. And uh, also, more research topic because due to the severe condition in Taiwan, uh, like just as I mentioned, typhoon, earthquake, and the high humidity, high temperature. Actually, according to the, the measurement of the two demonstration wind turbine by Swan Corp, after two years measurement, the corrosion and the erosion the, is two times faster than in the turbine in North Sea. <laughs> uh, so, so it, if, so the new problem uh, may become the design, the, the next generation design. Yeah, and also the talent cultivation is urgent in demand in Taiwan. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor Zhang Maoshu. Uh, yeah, please, uh, we do have a little bit time for question. Please. Yeah, thank you very much for a very interesting talk and also for the bilingual sort of uh, uh, final slide here. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. So <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> um, now I have, uh, have two questions. One is, you didn't say much about uh, the levelized costs, so to speak, per kilowatt hour. So in uh, yeah, the next, the second phase, for example, what are the costs really for producing the energy from 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 offshore wind uh, as compared uh, to other energy sources because uh, electricity is heavily subsidized here in Taiwan and so do you have a chance to compete with that? Uh, so that's the one question. The second is I think uh, in when it comes to floating uh, sort of uh, wind turbines, uh, I think the, the the potential is almost unlimited in the end, uh, and uh, you could become a world leader really in this thing. Japan clearly is also looking into that, uh, and if you want to go beyond, I mean the low-hanging fruits. I mean, it's not really low-hanging if you are in uh, 
below 50 meter uh, terrain, of course, but it can be done, we know, uh, and it's, uh, it has been demonstrated in other places of the world. But if you really want to go down deep decarbonization, when, of course, you need to go to floating structures, you may even think of airborne wind turbines, uh, which is yeah. another frontier, very promising, but very challenging at the same time. So, so I think that if you more aggressively go into that field, you ca can become a world leader, actually. And it is promising, and in the end, it will be needed in order to deliver, because as we discussed before, Taiwan also needs to completely decarbonize by 2050. I think there's no way to just uh, think of 50% reduction. Uh, this is not in line with the Paris Agreement and anything. So this is the, the second question. But so the first one was about cost, uh, if you give me some numbers. The second, how aggressively do you want to go into uncharted territory that would be floating and airborne? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about the first question about the leverage cost. Uh, yeah, actually, I have a slide, but not here. We, maybe I can send you later. Yeah, about the cost. But uh, about the cost, the last question is about the localization, local content, because we ask some item must be made in Taiwan, and uh, and uh, it's the, and there's uh, like the underwater uh, underwater structure, and uh, according to the wind farm derived their information to me. The cost uh, from the supplier, like a uh, city, century city, is about 20% higher than in Europe. <laughs> yeah. So the cost uh, actually now actually is higher because they, 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 they calculated the cost uh, only by 2025, the 5.5 gigawatt. And then now we will announce the third, third phase to. 30, 30, about 10 gigawatt, and then the cost can be done, can be, can be reduced. Uh, so, so th this is the reason why uh, we are looking for, urgently looking for the, the announcement of the third phase. And because not only the wind farm delivery, but also the local service action, the cost will be reduced. And, and because they can calculate the cost, not only 5.5 gigawatt, but 10 gigawatt or more. Yeah. And the second question about the floating type, actually, and uh, to reduce the carbon, I think in Japan, actually, we have, uh, in September last year, we visited the, the Professor Ishihara Professor, uh, in the Tokyo University, who is the leader of the project of the floating wind in Japan. And uh, they, they developed two kinds of uh, the, 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 the platform, one by traditional steel structure, and then the other one by concrete. And uh, now, actually, some, some industry in Taiwan of concrete, the interest, uh, maybe uh, concrete will be a solution. Uh, maybe I, I'm not sure the concrete structure for the carbon reduction will be better than steel. Maybe, yeah, steel used car with coal, yeah, maybe it's better. But the cost will, will be the most important issue because if the cost is reduced soon, uh, and the, the Actually, the floating type, they don't need uh, very, they, they don't need much work in the, in, on the ocean. They can, uh, they can make in harbor. And then and also, the, and, the, oh, and they can uh, take the, by, by, by top uh, and the back to the, to the, to the, to the yacht and the, to repair. And the, so the cost of the marine time engineer will be, is quite long. So, and the, I, I think the cost is the problem. Uh, when maybe the cost is lower than the fixed type, maybe maybe the water depth uh, 30 meter can be also be used. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.